Thank you, Madam Speaker. Very pleased to be here today. Even though I've had a bad week last week, labor rates or number of unemployed are going crazy in Alberta. The oilers lost. Flames lost. Stampeders lost. But you know what, Madam Speaker? This bill is a winner. And I'm glad to stand here today and speak on this bill. And I thank the member from Dartmouth, Coal Harbour, for bringing this bill in. We sit on the Environment Committee together, and this is a winner. As a member of the Environment Sustainable Development Committee, I'm pleased to speak today on 238, National Strategy on the Safe Disposal of Lamps Containing Mercury Act. Bill C-238 would establish a national strategy for the safe disposal of the lamps containing mercury, guidelines regarding the facilities for safe disposals, and the creation of a plan to promote public awareness. Mercury has been identified as a toxic substance under the Canadian Environment Protection Act in 1999, and the release of mercury poses a significant risk to the Canadian environment and to public health. Canada-wide standards for mercury-containing lamps, Madam Speaker, were developed by the Canadian Council of Ministries of the Environment, endorsed in 2011. And I want to dwell a little bit on the plan to promote public awareness. You know, I know a lot of the uh, younger members here in the House probably grew up during the Star Wars uh, era and probably played with fluorescent uh, lamps as sorts. Probably broke them. Hopefully they put some protection on their hands, but no one thought about protection for what they were breathing in when they broke. I remember as a uh, little bit before that era, going to school, teachers used to bring it out in science. When we have this mercury, we'd play from it hand to hand and roll it back and forth. No one knew any better, Madam Speaker. No one knew any better. In fact, I remember one of my guys putting it on his tongue to taste it. And think about it. I'm not sure if he's around anymore, and I don't really want to inquire. But that's how ignorant we as Canadians were a number of years ago. We're not ignorant today, man, Chair, and this is why we need to address it. I go back a number of years ago. I was a young police officer in the mid-70s, and I went to a community called Fort St. James in the interior of British Columbia. And about 25 miles north of Fort St. James was an area called Pinchy Lake. And there was a mercury mine on that lake. Mercury mine opened up in about 1941, and it highlighted through the 40s, closed for about 10, 12 years, and then started up in the late 60s and shut down again in the mid-70s. And there was contamination from that mercury mine because it was an open pit mine and it was an underground mine. And there's a beautiful lake called Pinchy Lake just to the outskirts of the mine. And I remember driving there, and this would be about 1978, the spring of 78, I drove out to this lake to take a look at it, I heard about it. There's a town there too, it's a ghost town now, Madam Chair, there's nobody living there. But there's people fishing on the lake. But on the shore, about every 300 yards, wherever you walked in that area, there were signs, mercury contamination, do not fish. Yet, there were people out there, Aboriginal people, out there fishing. And I stopped to talk to some of them and said, oh, it won't hurt us. You know, it's, uh, this is just to keep us off the lake. That's why, Madam Chair, we need to educate people. That was wrong then. It definitely wouldn't be acceptable today. Madam Speaker, mercury is an essential component in some of the energy uh, efficient lamps, such as fluorescent tubes and light bulbs. And you know, at home, I've got a fairly large shop. I like to play around with motorcycles and cars and as I got a little bit older I can't see as well as I used to see and I hate glasses when I'm working on something because I always fall off and then I bang my head as I bend over to pick them up. So I decided to go to the best lights out there, mercury vapor. So I got these big tremendous big mercury vapor lights in my shop. And I remember when I went into Edmonton because I believe in recycling, I'd go to a recycle shop and see if I could buy some of these and some of it probably wasn't as much as me being uh, a real environmentalist. I'm a little bit cheaper and you can buy them a lot cheaper used than you can buy them used, Madam Chair. So I bought these mercury vapor lights and I put them in my shop. But I remember when I was, went over to pick them up, the guy was testing them. Oh, this one didn't work. 
this wouldn't work, I bought that one. He did about two times in a row where they didn't work, he threw them, and I said, you know what, you get half a dozen which I need, and I'll come back in a few hours, because this just wasn't a healthy atmosphere to be in. Again, ignorance, Madam Chair. People don't know the significant dangers of mercury lamps. Now, why am I using them? I, I know better. Again, I'm using them because they're very efficient. Uh, the use of uh, fluorescent bulbs or mercury vapor bulbs lowers the energy use of other bulbs, thus reducing the mercury that would come out of our uh, power plant. So that's why a lot of people use them. Plus, they're more, co more cost effective and they last 10 times as long as a normal light. So that's why people in industry use them. People in shops, uh, skating rinks across this country, they use them for that reason, Madam Chair. Our former uh, Conservative government in power, we were very active in nego negotiating the uh, Minimatic Convention, as mentioned earlier by the last speaker, Madam Chair, on mercury that called for tougher measures to reduce the mercury emissions by 2013. And in 2014, our government followed up with the regulations prohibiting the broad import and manufacture of uh, mercury uh, contaminated items. I wanted to go back to something here, Madam Chair, but even prior to that, we, um, in 2001, the Canadian Council of Ministers that I had mentioned earlier had got together and they came up with a set of guidelines, Madam Chair, and that was a uh, target was to 70% reduction in the average content of mercury in all mercury-containing lamps by 2005 compared to the 1990 levels, Madam Chair, and 80% reduction by 2010. Well, guess what? Industry jumped to the, the act that they are asked to uh, enforce, and the lamps uh, passed 80% standard by 2006, Madam Chair. So industry, when you challenge them, will comply and will work very hard to meet the guidelines set by government. Much of the work and cost in implementing this strategy, Bill C-230, would actually be done at the provincial and municipal levels, Madam Chair, which is where these recycling and disposal facilities would be located. Prior to my MP role, Madam Chair, I sat as the mayor for the City of Fort St. John and I sat on the North Peace Regional District, which is the area encompassing all of the North Peace. And I sat as a director, Madam Chair. And one of my portfolios was garbage disposal and the garbage dumps. And I traveled throughout the North Peace area. And uh, I kind of uh, feel I'm a bit of a trash expert, Madam Chair. And I know that much work needs to be done by bringing out this bill, Bill C-238. We need to educate the people running our garbage disposal units. Probably not as much, Madam Chair, in our larger urban areas because those garbage dumps and facilities are very well organized and we have professional people. But I'm talking about uh, rural Canada, the Northwest Territories. In these small areas, most of these, uh, we'll call them waste disposal sites, are unmanned, Madam Chair. They're run by the counties and they, they may be manned one day a week by uh, someone that comes in and looks after it during the special days. But at these sites, Madam Chair, there's just uh, usually uh, garbage bins. And most people today probably bring their fluorescent lights or their mercury vapor lights if they burn out, and they toss them in there. Well, that's not good, Madam Chair. No, that's bad. Because we don't know where they're going. How much time, Madam Chair? OK, thank you. So we need to make sure that we educate the people managing these facilities and making sure that these facilities have the proper containment for mercury vapor lights. Now, that won't be a big cost, but a cost that we must ensure the government work with all levels of government to ensure that those are there so that when people bring in the mercury vapor lights for disposal, there is a place to put them, a safe place to put them, so none of the mercury, if they do get broken, will escape, Madam Chair. Although a number of initiatives to address the lamps that contain mercury are already underway across Canada, cooperation among all levels of government will promote a consistent nationwide approach to safe and environmentally sound disposal of lamps, Madam Chair. Mr. Speaker, our Conservative Party supports Bill C-238. This bill ensures lamps containing mercury are safely disposed 
and is in line with the party's previous efforts to keep Canada's environment clean and to control the harmful toxic substances. Thank you, Madam Chair.